everyone. Today we're going to talk about the carbon cycle. So there's lots of different elements that have cycles, meaning they are shifted around where they're at in the planet. Notice they're not called circles. So it's not just always from this one point to this point, but it's a little bit more random than that. But you could track these elements on the periodic table like carbon or nitrogen or phosphorus and check where they are in the planet at any given time. These changes are caused by physical changes and chemical changes. Sometimes it's due to living organisms, but it's similar to the water cycle that you learned about maybe in elementary school and how there's multiple pathways, how you can get from water in the atmosphere to water in the ocean. There's a lot of different ways you could end up there. Same thing with the carbon cycle. There's a lot of different pathways, some of them overlapping to end up in the same reservoir. All right, so let's talk about reservoirs. There's four main reservoirs uh, where carbon is stored. Um, you tend to think of the word reservoir as like, you know, like a drinking reservoir, but really they're, they're um, places like the atmosphere. All right, atmosphere you are familiar with. The geosphere, that's the rocky part of the earth. The hydrosphere, bleh. <laughs> the hydrosphere is the liquid part of the earth. And then the biosphere is all the living things on our earth. And there's going to be a lot of carbon stored within the living things as well. So the element carbon can move easily from one reservoir to another. And it can be stored in fossil fuels for millions of years. So this particular image is it's simplified. It's not showing all the possible arrows. Let's look at another image. Whoa, there's a lot going on here, right? So you can see that, you know, it's shifting around between the ocean and the geosphere or the living things, but there's a lot of different pathways that it can be, um, that it can take. Now, what I also want to point out to you is it's not always just going to be in elemental carbon form like this, just plain old letter C on the table. Okay. In the atmosphere, we see carbon bonded with oxygen. In the biosphere, like in cows and in the atmosphere, we will see it as in the form of methane. And, and here, this is the chemical compound for propane, like that kind of propane that you would burn in your gas, in your gas grill. And um, that gas is found underground and it also has carbon in it because it was produced from once living things. So these are the chemical formulas of other parts of the carbon cycle. We've got carbonic acid in the ocean. Uh, we have glucose and methane within the biosphere. We've got calcium carbonate in things like shells and in rocks. Okay. So you'll notice these all have carbon and a lot of them have a lot of hydrogen as well. So what is a fossil fuel? You hear about these a lot when we're talking about the carbon cycle. So a fossil fuel, we call it a fossil because it's from something that was once living. Okay, but this is, in this case, it's a fuel rather than like a fossil of a shell. Okay. Um, they were created by plants and animals that lived a really, really long time ago, and they were buried under just the right perfect conditions and the pressure of the earth pushing down on it um, caused it to go through a variety of chemical changes and to become a fuel source. Okay, um, So it was the carbon that was actually in the living thing that is now changed into the carbon in the fuel. Oil, gasoline, and propane are examples. Here are some other examples of things that we use as fuels, and so therefore would be fossil fuels. Um, you'll see they vary in the number of carbons that they each have. And um, for example, you see things like gasoline, 
lighter fluid. Why do we care? Why is carbon important? And why should we care that it's moving around on the earth? Okay, well, matter can't be created or destroyed. So it means that there's a limited amount of carbon, right? It's just being recycled and reused throughout uh, our planet. And it's absolutely necessary for living things. In fact, we have a whole branch of chemistry called organic chemistry that is specific about the study of how carbon is used in living things. Okay. So if you uh, are a farmer, <laughs> then it's going to be really important you understand how, you, how the carbon is in your soil and as if it's in the right format for your plants to use it. Um, we care a lot about fossil fuels because they are generally what's used to create our electricity. We use them in our cars to power our car. We, you, a lot of us burn oil to heat our homes and most factories run on fossil fuels of some sort or another. So that means most of the things we have around us were created courtesy of fossil fuels. In addition, most plastics are actually made from oil, which is a fossil fuel. And um, another reason why we should care about the carbon cycle is that um, the cycle is being changed and the distribution of carbon has changed and that has some concerning implications. How has it changed? Well, we've been able to track that there's now a lot more carbon in the atmosphere than there used to be in the format of carbon dioxide and methane. But we're going to mostly focus on carbon dioxide right now. All right, so um, there's something called the Keeling Curve, which has been data that's been collected from the 1950s on uh, in Hawaii. And you can see from this data that the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has changed a lot since the 1960s. The way we can learn about carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, especially if we want to go back really a long time before we had devices that could sense the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, is we look at ice. So literally what they do is they will drill a hole like way deep in places that have permanent ice, like um, the South Pole, for example. And the further deep you go, you're actually looking at ice that was created a really, really long time ago. And when that ice formed, little air bubbles would have been trapped in the ice and it stayed trapped for all this time. So what you can do is you can literally um, drill out these cores and then they strategically melt the ice at different time periods through history. And then they can use a carbon dioxide sensor and, and probably other sensors too, to track like what type of gases were mixed in with the water when it froze. Okay, so this is what it would look like Obviously, these have to be kept frozen. Okay. And from the data, we can tell um, that the carbon dioxide in the ice samples has changed over time. So here we can see a, th a thousand years ago wh how much carbon dioxide we found in the ice versus more recent ice, how much carbon dioxide has been found. Here is um, another set of data that's going to kind of combine um, several pieces of information together. And you can see that the carbon dioxide levels has changed over time. It goes up and down and up and down and up and down. But if you look at more recently, oh my goodness, you know, it's a lot different than what it has been in the past. So what causes this? What causes this? Well, um, we certainly know there's more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than there used to be. And we also know that we're burning a lot more fossil fuels than we used to, especially in the last 200 years. Okay, We use them for cars, for the production of electricity, for uh, factories, and even in our homes. We also, a lot of us, use either electricity to heat our home or we burn some sort of fossil fuel, oil, or propane. And since most of our electricity comes from burning coal, um, 
I know it's, it's switching slowly as new initiatives come into place, but still a lot of our electricity comes from burning fossil fuels. That means that any electricity use is contributing to the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Also, we are doing a double whammy in that we are cutting down a lot of trees that normally would take carbon out of the atmosphere. And so um, deforestation has contributed to the amount of carbon dioxide, especially because often we then burn the wood. And so taking the carbon that was stored in the wood and putting that into the atmosphere as well. Um, because human population has also exploded over the last couple hundred years, that means that these uh, activities like cars and electricity production have gone up to compensate for the number of people on our planet. Uh, volcanic activity also, we know that volcanoes also caught, contribute to the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So it's not necessarily all caused by people, but there is definitely some uh, human activities that are causing the carbon dioxide levels to change. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and the best compliment you can give me is to subscribe. Teachers, there are some possible activities to go along with this video in the description of the video.